Hello everybody and welcome to the last update from the 2024 excavation season. I'm standing on the rampart of the 3rd and 4th century stone fort at Vindolanda and the work that has been going on here is incredible. The rampart is a very large structure and it can be very hard to excavate. It normally has some communal features. We've talked in the previous video about things like ovens and storage and the building that Eric Burley excavated in 1929. But it's normally just a giant mound of clay. And it is quite interesting that it was inside the rampart that one of the best finds of the last period at Vindolanda was uncovered. I'm talking about a really lovely stone carved head wearing a mural crown. A little bit more on that later with the volunteer who found it. We've walked across the Intervallum Road and into a building. Since the last video, we have discovered a couple more meters of that Intervallum Road. But what really is extraordinary is the inside of the structure where I am standing now. You'll remember that we said we needed to uncover the full perimeter of the room. Well, in the last period, we were successful and that enabled us to start removing the top fill, the demolition debris that had been thrown into this building once its use had ended. So what have we found under the demolition debris? We've got this incredible flagstone floor, some really beautiful flags. And as you can see, we've got a quern stone encased into the floor here. And not only the sort of lower half of the quern stone, but also the milling stone that goes on top of it. So this would have once been a complete object and it's been reused as part of the fabric of the floor. These rectangular buildings with incredibly well-preserved flagged floors are what Paul Bidwell uncovered in the northern half of the quadrant in his 1980 excavation. Paul was supposed to conduct a five season excavation but he only completed one summer and he published it in 1985 and what he found was a series of two rectangular buildings similar to the ones that I'm standing on plus two more squared structure that looked like commanding officer apartments. So in Paul's pictures, which you can see in his 1985 publication, you can see that quern stones in floors are very typical of the structures that he uncovered. Another thing that we share with Paul's report is the space between rectangular buildings. We've got four courses of masonry here and the space between the two buildings was filled with incredibly interesting and well-preserved pottery. Again, you've got pictures in the 1985 report that show the unexcavated pots in the area that we're going to explore next year. But the ceramic in between these two buildings is going to tell us loads about the phases and the occupation and the discard of the people who lived here between the 3rd and the 4th century. You will also remember that we had a gigantic Victorian rubber trench inside our excavation area. We closed this season on a high by finding the very end of the rubber trench. How do you determine where you found the end of a rubber trench? Well, that's easy to know. The structures start standing up again. So behind my shoulders, you can see we've got the back wall, the northern wall of this rectangular building and the southern wall of the next structure. So the people who were stealing the stone concluded that they had all the stone that they needed and left that bit standing. So we finally found the end of this rubber trench. We're all very happy about it and we've given it a really good clean and we're starting to see what layers are left. So we're starting to see what did the Victorians not take away and we've got bits of dark that look like burnt deposits. We've got foundations of walls. It looks like we are sort of in the third century, but we'll need to do more work on this next year. So in the last couple of weeks of the Vindolanda excavation season, we uncovered building number four 
of a series of east-west oriented rectangular structures. And here I am standing on the southern wall of this building. Obviously, we haven't yet removed any of the demolition debris because you've guessed it, we haven't got the full perimeter of the structure. So that is going to be our first target for next year's excavation season. We are here with our volunteer, Sean, who has been coming for how many years? Six. Fantastic. Would you say that this is your best find oh, in six years? By far. Absolutely. I've not found anything comparable to that at all. So what um, Shan's found is a lovely uh, stone head uh, with what looks like a mural crown. So we've got the face here, the hairstyle is very elaborate, and then a mural crown is almost a representation of a city um, on somebody's head. Now, when you're talking about protectors of the cities, the Latin term for a city is a female term. So this is likely a female goddess as opposed to a god um, but we haven't got really a clear identification because these are a lot more common in the east of the roman empire than they are in uh, roman britain we do have a comparative so from south shield yep. which was dug as part of another community project called wall quest how did it feel tell us all about oh. finding it well i mean I, we were on the top layer so you don't expect to fit find anything there except for maybe bits of pot and the odd nail and I was just after lunch and I kind of used a minimatic to get a bit, a bit out and actually she was laying there facing me and I couldn't believe uh, I the face was just looking back at me and it just it was just amazing I just couldn't believe it I was just wow <laughs> it's very well carved for that sort of late level because you were working in the like third and fourth century mm. rampart taking the top off trying to establish the edges of the rampart and she just came out It is really incredible to see how much progress has been made from April to September, considering our two months pause in the middle of summer. The ground that we've covered exceeds 1000 meters squares when the whole quadrant is about 2000. So that's amazing. And the Vindolanda Trust wishes to thank every single one of the volunteers who's helped us achieve this incredible target. If you haven't volunteered, but you've been following us online, following our progress on our web blogs, consider coming and visit this extraordinary site to see in person the ground that we cover and the incredible discoveries. You'll ask what it is we have discovered in the end. Can you give us a summary? And here is the summary. We started the excavation wanting to know whether we had a division between the north and the south of the fort, with the north being the place for the infantry and the south being the place for the cavalry. We also wanted to tie in together lots of pieces of archaeology that had already been done. So we had the Eric Burley investigation of the area surrounding the Principia. Um, we also had Eric excavation in 1929 on the rampart. We had Paul Bidwell's 1980s excavation right behind us and we obviously have this giant rubber trench right in the middle. So we wanted to tie all of that together and give you a bit more interpretation. So what we've got so far is a traditional infantry barrack on the very western side of the site followed by a central road, which we hope will continue running parallel um, and all the way to the fort wall and to the gates. And then we've got in the eastern side between the road and the rampart, some east-west orientated rectangular buildings, which match in sort of floor plan, but not in interpretation with Paul's excavations in 1980s. And finally, we've got our intervallum road and our rampart. So really interesting to see this all coming together. For now, it does appear as if we do have more infantry occupation on the northern side of the fort, but we do have a clear plan on what to do next year. We're going to march inexorably northwards towards the fort wall we've got another thousand square meters of turf to remove we likely have the rest of this building which Paul never excavated and then we've got 
two more rectangular buildings which he appeared to have excavated in the 1980s. It's going to be really interesting to compare our results and our pottery analysis with what was done previously and to see how the two merge together. We are also going to continue with the excavation on the infantry barrack on the side that was deterred in 1980 but never excavated. And finally, we're going to have a complete 4th century floor plan for the Fort of Vindolanda. I really look forward to sharing that with you all next year, so come and catch us next April.